Afternoon, everybody. Um, everybody ready to go? Okay, good deal. All right. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, I know about half of you in here, I think. I'm Charles Brantz. I'm the Douglas County District Attorney. Uh, with me today, I have David Melton, the Assistant Chief Assistant District Attorney in my office. First and foremost, um, I'd like to thank the Lawrence Police Department for their hard work and dedication in this matter. They put countless numbers of hours on this case, and um, their, their manpower and their work was just absolutely incredible. And so we want to express our thanks to their department and everything that they've done to bring this case forward. <clears throat> just a reminder for those of you that um, might be from across the state line, uh, we do have a couple rules that I need to remind everybody about. First and foremost, the charges are allegations only, and the defendant is innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. Um, additionally, uh, rules uh, dictate that I cannot describe for you certain details. Um, essentially, if it's not happened in the courtroom, I can't tell you about it here. Uh, that's based on our Kansas ethics rules. So I will be limited in some of the things that I will be able to tell you at this point in time. Uh, as far as what's going on today, let me briefly tell you, today we have filed an amended information in this case, charging Sarah B. Gonzalez McLenn with first degree murder and felony theft of the automobile owned by Mr. Sasko. Um, the particular adjustments to the charges are that we have filed the requisite notice to seek a hard 50 penalty in this case. Normally, first degree murder in the state of Kansas is charged and punishable by life imprisonment with a chance for parole after 25 years. With a designation and notice seeking a hard 50 sentence, it is life imprisonment with a chance for parole after 50 years. Um, we believe that the facts of this case uh, support aggravated findings that a jury would be able to make and determine that the hard 50 sentence would be appropriate. Those aggravated findings or the basis for an aggravated finding would be that the crime was particularly heinous, atrocious, and cruel. For that to be found, the jury has to go through, after they make a finding of guilt, they have to make a finding that those special circumstances apply. Uh, if they make that finding, then she would be subject to the hard 50 sentence. I would note that the jury is not required to find that the victim was aware of the circumstances of their killing or was conscious to the severity and nature of the homicide. <clears throat> With that, I would take a few limited questions about the charges themselves and the process from this point forward. Yes, ma'am. Well, some of those details I would not be able to go into, but I can tell you the way, the, the method and way that the homicide was carried out, we believe that uh, would be sufficient for a jury to find that the manner itself, the way the homicide occurred, was uh, cruel, heinous, and atrocious. Um, past that, I would not be able to tell you any details until that's revealed in the courtroom. Not eligible for a death penalty because why? Some people were claiming this is a death penalty case. Kansas has very specific rules for death penalty cases, uh, not eligible for death penalty. Typically, some of the things that make you eligible for a death penalty is committing a homicide associated with a sex crime, uh, killing more than one person, killing a law enforcement officer in the line of duty, those types of things. Uh, for the Kansas statute on death penalty apply, there's not the appropriate circumstances in this case. The uh, theft of the vehicle occurred after the felony, so it wouldn't be during the commission of an uh, inher inherently dangerous felony, so it would not apply under those circumstances. What does the court Well, simply put, we believe that the facts of this case, uh, once they're revealed in the courtroom, will, will be evidence of that uh, heinous, atrocious, and cruel offense that the Kansas legislature has decided is uh, warranted for a, a crime of this nature that a higher penalty is appropriate. Is the affidavit public record? In Kansas, affidavits are not public record. Is that the equivalent of a probable cause statement? It is. Is there anything else that you can tell us about like, what was found in the car 
Well, I generally would not be able to. I know there's already been news accounts of what's been found in the car as, as uh, put out by authorities in Florida. I would be able to confirm that uh, those things were indeed found in the car. Can you say who might have a murder weapon in the car? Well, I can tell you that there were weapons found in the car. I will not qualify it to that extent. Do we know which weapon was used to kill I, I would not be able to reveal that information at this point in time. It's hard for me to tell at this point in time. At this point in time, we don't believe that there's any um, situation that has a bearing on, on this act. Uh, that may change as, as the case progresses. If it did change, would it, would it prompt you to back off the hard 50 and make a deal with them? I do not know. Are you open to making a deal? Well, at this point in time, uh, it, it's charged the way it's charged. Uh, we evaluate every case as, as things progress. Um, and that's on a, usually a day-to-day -day basis, depending on what's going on in the case. I mean, we're, we're open to uh, uh, dialogue with the defense, but at this point in time, I can tell you that she's charged, and, and if found guilty, that she would be uh, potentially facing a hard 50 sentence. Well, there's no... There's no per se obligation, but I think any good prosecutor is going to explore all options before going forward in trial. Now, in, in your opinion, I mean, you've tried a lot of cases and you've been, you know, uh, in your career for a while. Is this one of the worst cases that you've tried? Why do you think there's so much attention around this case? Uh, well, I, that, that would probably be for you to answer as far as why there's so much attention on the case. Um, cases, an unusual set of circumstances. Not very often we do have female uh, defendants, um, a difference in age, those types of things do make it somewhat unique. Um, but I think the facts will speak for themselves with regard to the, the case and the nature of it and the importance of it. Well, generally, in a case like this, is usually a long process. Uh, it's not unusual for a case like this to take a year or more to get to trial. Um, there's a significant amount of discovery that will have to be done. Law enforcement officers uh, created and made contact with, with literally hundreds of leads. And so all those things will have to be chased down, documented, and turned over, and, and studied by both sides. So just that in and of itself takes quite a bit of time to, to go through. And then the legal issues in the courtroom sometimes take a significant amount of time. So, uh, yes, it's, it's very probable that this case will take many months to resolve. At this time, we have no reason to believe there is anybody else involved. Well, I, I suppose I wouldn't probably go into necessarily details of exactly how they conducted their investigation. But I will tell you that the Lord's Police Department, once uh, they were notified of this case, the detectives went into full swing as a, as a whole. They fanned out and chased down simultaneously uh, multiple leads across the community to try to figure out what was going on in this matter and literally bird dogged this thing to the very end until we had our suspect uh, defendant back in custody this Saturday. I cannot at this time, no. It would be inappropriate for me to speculate on that. Does that matter, though, uh, that, that who's out of it, or uh, yes, it doesn't matter, the why? Well, I suppose the, the why could come into consideration. At this point in time, our concern or our focus is, was it premeditated, first-degree murder, um, and we believe it is. Uh, Kansas has very limited use of any type of uh, mental disease or defect. Um, not knowing what their uh, reports or anything like that will entail, it may have an impact on it, but it may not. So, with that, I think uh, that will probably conclude the questions. Thank you very much for your time. We will have a press packet that will have a release and a copy of the, the complaint for you uh, when you leave. 
Uh, Ms. McLean's uh, next court appearance is March 27th at 2 p.m. She's currently held on a million-dollar bond. Thank you.